Mm. Mm. <sighs> Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here and welcome to my patch 4.1 reading, overview, and thoughts. The preliminary patch notes came out today with the full patch notes probably coming out while the servers are down for six hours over on Monday going into Tuesday. That means there's usually a few things missing. It's usually like crafting recipes so people can't prepare for those ahead of time. But who knows, I believe in one of the preliminaries recently they even had crafting recipes, so I was pretty surprised by that. But anyway, if you've been keeping up with patch 4.1, this probably isn't going to be too much of a surprise, uh, probably skipping through a lot of the beginning aspects because it's always just screenshots and quests and quests that don't have names because they don't want to spoil anything and you know, you know, we're, we're four years into this at this point, you kind of, you know what the drill should be. Anyway, uh, let's move down into the actual patch notes themselves. So, new main scenario requests have been added. We got those pictures. It's going to start in Rolger's Reach with Arenvald's adventure, and then this question mark, 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 question mark. Handful of quests right there. Uh, looking forward to seeing how those pan out. New Chronicles of a New Era quest have been added. Dramatis, Parsene, and A City Fallen. These are just for the 24-man raid, as you could probably tell from the picture of the Prima Vista with Rabinaster sitting in the background. The ability to move to the Royal Menagerie, you know, they told us they were doing this like a month and a half ago, and I had kind of forgotten. You can now go there of your own free will by talking to the attendant at the Alamegan Quarter with these coordinates after completing a certain main scenario mission. Trying to keep it spoiler-free, apparently. Uh, players can move between Onokoro and Sakazuki by speaking to the NPCs at the location below. After completing the main scenario quest, Tide goes in, Imperials go out. So you can just teleport between them. Uh, the one that's not... Uh, oh, it's, it's all the way down here. Okay. Well, that's convenient. Uh, I guess before you have flying. And I guess it's convenient overall. Like, if I were if I were to enter from this side and there was a hunt on the other side... Yeah, you know, that's, that's pretty nice. I, I always forget to use these kind of teleport NPCs. So, uh, you know, I'll probably forget to use that one too, but we'll see. You got new Hildebrand quests, uh, a Hill, uh, Hingun Tale, Nachu Goes East. We already know that one's just more of a preview for the rest of the Hildebrand quests to come later. So there's not really too many expectations there. Uh, <laughs> making adjustments to the animal weapon. If your condensation is faster and more duties contribute to it, and Lux replica animal weapons can be purchased from the restoration node. So if you're still doing your animal weapons because you're like, well, they're not going to give us your Rico weapons, I might as well work on the old ones, then, uh, yeah, then you've got, you've just got a few uh, nerfs to the uh, progression, so it'll go a little bit faster. Kojin Beast Tribe quests are going to be in Tamamizu. You know, is this the first time we've had an Aetherite on top of a Beast Tribe quest? Because that's what it is. Tamamizu has its own teleport crystal, as you can see, yeah. Um, we've had ones that are right next to them, like Mog Home and, uh, and the one in uh, Annex Trine. But, yeah, that's pretty sweet. Um, you're going to be able to use these to level, because you can get these right at, like, level 61, 62-ish. It says level 60, but you have to have that main scenario quest tide goes in complete. You'll probably be six, you'll have to be 61, 62 at some point. But you could do them at level 60, so you can use them for leveling if you're going to be doing them every day. Something I always liked about the Beast Tribe quests was the fact that you can throw them into your leveling rotations every day just to kind of switch things up. And on top of that, as you rank up, of course, you're going to be getting those stories that uh, evolve over time. Um, let's see. Kojin, daily quest. Players must first complete the Beast Tribe quest. Heaven Sent, which is, you know, where, where is, is this first one right there? There you go. Uh, Beast Tribe currencies, which are going into the currency tab. No longer going to be physical currencies. Uh, players level 50 or above will now receive... Homestones when doing Nath and Vanu Vanu Beast Tribe quests. All right. Strength of enemies in the level 30 Gladiator quest. The rematch has been reduced. Was that a hard one? All right. Sure. I'm not. I'm never. I don't have to do it again. So it doesn't matter to me. They mentioned this recently that they were buffing tradecraft leaves uh, up to to make the 50 to 60 stretch a little bit faster for uh, crafting in particular. So I mean, that's fine. My crafters are already 60, but if you're someone who's leveling them, it should be a little faster now. We now have the new area in the Lost Canals of Uznair known as the Hidden Canals of Uznair, which uh, seem to have a lot more riches in order to uh, in order to make some money in here. Entering the Hidden Canals, so in the Lost Canals of Uznair, which you have to enter via gazelle skin maps and then getting a party together and then killing enemies outside of your, your map location, and then hoping that a portal appears, once you're inside, sometimes a time-worn thief's map will be given to you will reveal a new location 
on your map. Players can use the general action dig, which I believe they said was going to be under uh, underwater in one of the recent interviews. So you don't actually fight any enemies to get into the hidden canals once you've got the Time Worn Thieves map. Um, but it's going to have <laughs> a lot more RNG than the original Lost Canals of Osnair did. So treasure chests located are armed with traps, which when triggered will release enemies. That's nothing new. Um, the vault key can be used to open one of three available doors. You now only have a 33% chance of making it through to the next to the next room. Uh, if you choose the correct one, you will be allowed to progress through six subsequent chambers to eventually fight your way to the final chamber. If you are incorrect, then you will just be removed, and in the event the party is defeated, you'll also be removed. He recommended, Naoki Yoshida recommended, that you do bring eight people, and that this one's probably not worth risking bringing less. So I'm curious to see how tough it really is. It's probably still going to be doable with like five or six, but eight is always going to be the safe number when doing content like this. Another thing that is surprisingly not mentioned here i don't really see it maybe it's mentioned later um is that the chests inside the hidden canals have this uh, a double up feature where you can double or nothing you know you can look at the chest see what your rewards will be if you double or nothing uh and if you get double you get double the rewards if you get nothing well you get nothing and you can double or nothing up to five times uh it's not really mentioned here surprisingly uh so i'm curious as to why i guess for people who just didn't know there you go that's that one little additional aspect that you'll be getting and on top of that, there's going to be new rewards that are part of the Lost Canals and the Hidden Canals of Uznair. Uh, grand and free companies for, ooh, squadron stuff. EXP gain in missions has been increased. Difficulty of the flagged missions, Void Sent Elimination, which requires squadron rank 2, has been reduced. The level cap for squadrons have, has been raised to 60. And change classes and change chemistry can now be accessed by speaking with each squadron member. I kind of like that. It was nice to have them all together as well. Um, oh, but it looks like you can still do the part with the regiment. Okay, okay. It's just another option that you can go up to them since you can be talking to them to give them uh, to give them behaviors for the command missions that we're going to be talking about in a second here. Command missions have been added allowing players to enter instance dungeons alongside three unit members. So it was funny. When they talked about this in uh, some of the TGS interviews, they said that when you first start with them, they're basically going to start with, and let's see if they have a picture of it down here. Do they? They do, but it's pretty far down. Okay. There's basically going to be multiple modes. I just want to see if they got the screenshot here. Where is it? No, they don't. No screenshot of the... Uh... Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah. So they have... They basically start as independent only. And uh, as they master independent, they can then master offensive, defensive, and balanced. And when you... When they start as independent, they apparently do really dumb things. Like, for example, the tank can bring mobs that cleave over to the healer. And, uh, and the healer can prioritize rezzing over healing. So... They are actually dumb, and you have to make them smarter by training them in these squadron missions, which should make it a hilarious endeavor indeed, especially if they die and the healer's like, hold on, I'll heal you after I'm done rezzing. All right. Um, other than that, uh, there's only a handful of dungeons that you can do. Halatali, Thousand Maws, Brave Flock, Stone Vigil, Wanderer's Palace. Uh, you form a party by clicking command missions, going through the three that you want to bring with you, uh, and then showing their individual mastery levels. You do have to make sure you have one tank, two DPS, and one healer when you're going through these. And then you can select which of the dungeons you want, which you'll uh, have to pay Grand Company seals in order to enter, by the way. Deploy. Go in. <clears throat> it'll let you know what stances they're in. And then you can also issue commands like engage, disengage, re-engage, which is kind of weird. I feel like that's redundant to have engage, disengage, and then re-engage to get rid of disengage. It's, I mean, I get it. Actually, okay, never mind. The action is replaced. So the disengage button becomes re-engaged, so you don't have to press a different button, I guess. That's eh, whatever. It's still kind of a little bit redundant, but still, all the same. Uh, this is just to, to back off and regroup. Execute limit break, and then you have uh, your actual battle tactics. This was the thing we were just talking about before, where, you know, you can set it to independent. So we've been over that. So you can glamour your squadron members once they hit level 51. Uh, there's a little option here in the bottom right. And then you can supply, uh, apply, select apply glamour after speaking with a squadron outfitter. Uh, select the gear to which the glamour will be applied, then use the gear to cast the glamour. So that makes it seem like um, you don't, like you won't actually be giving them the gear to, to glamour. Is what it what is what it sounds like here. Gear used to be glamour will be uh, is not required to dispel. Blah blah blah. Glamour Prism will be consumed, but no gear will be lost. Yeah, it sounds like basically you can't use them to store gear on the squadron themselves. You are just casting a Glamour at the end of it all. So, uh, rip me. I was going to use them for a little bit of extra storage, but it seems that the the fates were not kind to me. And you're going to need a Glamour Prism in order to do this stuff. So, 
Uh, that's even, if anything, I have to buy even more items now just to do this. Uh, it's fine. I'm not a big glamour dude anyway. Uh, following items can be purchased with Grand Company seals. Okay, I'm gonna assume that this is gonna be filled in the full patch notes? Because <laughs> there's... Alright, never mind. New craftable items have been added to the company workshop. New rewards for exploratory vi voyages. Uh, alliances can now be formed through the party finder. Entrance to the diadem with an alliance via company workshops has been temporarily suspended. Oh, thank god they did that. I don't know what I would have done if they hadn't temporarily suspended alliance queuing into the diadem. Woe is me. I'm so glad they took this precaution and step and... Alright, sarcasm done. New uh, housing plots in Shirogane. People have been waiting for this for ages. Purchasing the land, all the free company plots. This is a re-explanation for people who never did it or didn't know what it was before. The only thing people are probably trying to pay attention to are the different uh, prize, uh, prices of the housing. Uh, this you could have found out already as well by looking at the older patch notes and uh, determining what the prices were for those when they've made changes in the past. Um, however, these are the initial pricings and the prices do go down over time. Uh, if houses remain unbought, so these are some of the lower prices. If you're buying a house, I highly recommend that you become familiar with the pricing if you didn't go out of your way to do the research already. Um, building an estate. This is all stuff that's been said a million times before. There's also the Kobai Goten building, which is where the apartments are going to be. So there's going to be a ton more apartments available on all the servers as well. And here are the requirements for it as well. 500,000 gil. Was it really? Yeah, it was. Okay. I was thinking 300,000 gil for the, the free company room. There's also the relocation feature, which is as simple as if you own a house and you go to a plot that's open that you want to buy, you just click relocate when you decide you want to buy it and it'll move your old house to the new location. Although all of your stuff is going to get thrown in the... Uh, is going to get thrown in a storage unit, which you can also use otherwise to just store uh, furniture in case you want to like take something out, but you don't want to actually remove it and put it in your inventory. So it should be easier for you to store all your furnishings and stuff like that, depending on the size of your house. So yeah, it's explaining it right here. You know, select a buyer, private individual, private residence relocation. 30% of the minimum value of the old plot will be applied towards the price of the new one. So it's even a little cheaper to relocate on top of that. And they've and math. So if you can't if you can't do math, destination plot price minus thirty percent of old plot price equals cost of relocation. There's your math for you. Uh, don't get too confused because there's 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 parentheses and stuff all over the place. No foil here. Furnishings. Uh, the upon relocation, they will be placed. Uh, normally discarded after removal will be placed in the storeroom. So even if you have something that is supposed to delete after it's been removed. Um, it won't be. You'll get to keep it. It'll just go into the storage unit, and you can replace it in your uh, outside or inside your house, depending on which furnishing it actually is. Exterior furnishings, exterior fix, ex ugh, exterior fixtures can be altered to match the new residential area and plot size in the event that they are different. Unique exterior fixtures will be carried over to the new plot, like the Paisa house wall and stuff like that. So it's all information here for people who are big on housing. I'm not, but there's a ton of little rules and uh, notes and things that you probably want to want to keep your eye on. You have storeroom status as well. A storeroom for furnishings has been added to estates, and like I said, you can use that even if you're not relocating just to store items there. So uh, in case you don't want them placed at the moment, or you're trying to mess around with your house and you don't want them back in your inventory, and the larger your house or in this case, private chamber apartments, uh, the more space you're actually going to be given. Outdoor only goes up to 40, but I feel like that's okay. Um, accessing the storeroom, this just tells you real quick, for company members, uh, eligible player members with furnishing placement privileges, individuals, owner or tenant, and then of course, private chambers and apartment, the owner. Indoor furnishings, yeah, and that's just using the storeroom. Here it is. I don't, I don't think we need to go over all that stuff. Layout mode, there's now a storage button there, so you can actually see what's in your storage. Yeah, and that's just showing all the items. And store subcommand has been uh, now available when selecting furnishing. So if something's on display, you can choose to store it. And there you go. All right. Oh, and by the way, all this stuff has been added to the residential caretaker in case you don't know how any of it works. Players can now swim in all residential areas. They added swimming, as you can see, the beaches. You can see the lavender beds. The goblet, personally, is my favorite, the Roman-style bath. And then, of course, you have the beaches of Shirogane. Uh, the number of NPCs in each residential area and their positions have been adjusted, all right. New furnishings have been added, a lot of very far eastern items, as you can see right here. New paintings have been added, uh, which usually means there's new 
new sightseeing logs. So there might be that might be the case. I gotta do those, or Ethis is gonna quiz me and it's gonna be bad. New window furnishings have been added. Okay, those look nice. Still can't actually see out the window, but you know. <laughs> Light will pour in based on the time of day at least. Uh, new blank partitions have been added, which can be decorated with several wallpaper designs. Uh, that way you don't have to have just one wallpaper design. You can uh, have a kid's room off on the side with all sorts of different stuff. All right, remove wallpaper designs, add wallpaper designs, and it's all pretty basic stuff. Uh, following items which allow players to employ materials, suppliers, junk mongers, and armor menders with new appearances have been added. So you can get far eastern looking uh, suppliers, junk mongers, and menders in your apartment to match Shirogane. And the, even though we know people not in Shirogane are still going to use them as well. Falling furnishings will no longer be destroyed when removed. Here's a huge list of them. We're not going to go over every single one. Uh, culinarian furnishings that grant attribute bonuses can now be returned to a player's inventory if they have never been used. I don't know why people are using them anyway. No one's using those before they go in the raid or anything. I guess just for role-playing purposes. New orchestrian rolls, new crops, new seeds for flower pots have been added. And those would be bright lily seeds, and you can purchase them from material supplier or apartment merchants. Estate-related items have been added to the following NPC shops. Uh, all of these, the apartment merchant, housing merchant, all that stuff. New aquarium fish, new aquarium interiors have been added. The sunken treasure tank trimmings, which I'm going to assume is that in the back right, right there. Uh, and then we have additional updates. New prizes. Oh, the Corpacur mount is an MGP mount. I wonder if I have enough for it. I think I have like three or 400,000. Because I really like that mount. That is that is a fantastic looking mount. So if you're someone who already has Fenrir and you look at this, you go, well, I want that instead. We'll go get some more MGP. Because <laughs> that's how you're going to be getting the uh, Corpacur mount, it looks like. New triple triad cards. Oh, great, a Fordola card. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I like the the Raubon and Pippin card here. They've got uh, the two the two A's, but I'm surprised they didn't put the one on the left where the six is because well, is it his left or his? Never mind. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Triple Triad battle area has been changed in uh, the mud plots. Is that Idleshire? Who goes there anymore? <laughs> Uh, new challenge logs have been added for custom deliveries. A cu the customer is always right. Complete six custom deliveries. Oh, that's pretty nice. Okay, that's probably gonna... Oh, it's only Gil? But I want experience points. Come on now. Uh, feeling lucky. Complete three dungeons via the duty roulette. Uh, that would be the alliance raid. Oh, the additional requirement is the alliance raid right there. Um, and then Aqua Gleam hun Hunger Force. Oh, and then they, they've just changed this to include the Lost Canals of Osnair. Okay, just making sure. And you need both of, you need all of these. Okay, that makes more sense. New Vistas have been added to the sightseeing log. There you go. Uh, the location of the ninth entry in the sightseeing log has been adjusted. Uh, new emotes have been added. Some of these are, I'm assuming, just basic emotes. Some of them are going to be coming from the Adventurer Squadron, so keep that in mind. The command missions more particularly. Uh, new aesthetician hairstyles have been added. All right. Entrance to the She Suite of the Violet Tides has been changed. Okay. Kugane Airship Landing will now add, uh, be added to the Ethernet in Kugane after tuning to all locations. All right. Uh, following out. Oh, God. Following action and traits have been adjusted. All right. Let's get into it. All right. Steel Cyclone. We knew they were doing this. Okay. So it looks like all the warrior stuff is. We already knew. It just. What's the strength of the barrier? 8%. Okay. So we have 8% of maximum HP. Um, and then it can dispel either of those, increasing damage absorbed by 4% for each amount. Last 15 seconds, recast time increased from 60 seconds to 90 seconds. Okay, so it's every 90 seconds you get 8% barrier, and then you can get rid of these specific buffs. Throw the battle, inner beast, vengeance, or raw intuition to empower it by 4% each. Okay, that's, uh, that's going to be way better for warriors, and I'm going to assume that Dark Knight needs some Dark Passenger and Dark Mind love in the next patch, but we'll have to wait and see. Okay, 10 potency to everything. And so the main reason they're adding 10 potency to everything is because they're reducing 5% off heavy thrust. Um, so I guess everything else just gets 10 potency, huh? And Dragon's Eye is only 3 units instead of 4. 10, 10, 10. Doom Spike's area effect is bigger. 10, 10. This one's 20. How, what? Dragon? Why? That doesn't... Never mind. I give up. Anyway. I mean, yeah, it kind of makes sense because 10% is... It's still more than 5%, though. 5% of 300, whatever, I'm not getting into it. Just everything's 10 potency. Anything that did damage is having its potency buffed. And the recast time of Jare Skolgul is being reduced by 5 seconds. Just because. Alright. <sighs> Dragoons, listen, I wanted you to get 3 eyes instead of 4. I like that. This, The rest of this is just crazy, man. <laughs> it's like, that's ah, whatever. It doesn't matter, it's just they're balancing the 5%, but whatever. It's just, it's... It pains me to say. This didn't need this this entire set of changes didn't need to happen. They could have just done the dragon's eye thing and it could have been done. 
Uh, Ninja, Doton had its potency buffed in accordance to fixing a bug with Dripping Blades 2. And Shikuchi's way faster now. So you're going to be going fast like Sanic. Rook all... What is this? What is this? What? Why? Why even do that? Why even do this? Like, what? What do you... Why... <laughs> one percent. All right, hypercharge is one percent stronger now, guys. All right, that's it. It's all right. It was already machines was already top tier, and now they're one percent topper tier. Uh, okay, this is Arcanist and Summoner. Uh, looking at just a quick glance, looks like it's mostly stuff we already knew. Uh, I'm still laughing about one percent hypercharge though. Uh, MP cost reduced on all the summons. Cast time reduced on all the summons to three seconds. Uh, Tri bind went under Dreadworm Trance. Has a 2.5 second cast time and 100 potency total since it's 30 plus 70. MP cost reduced, removed bind effect. Okay, so try bind is useful in Dreadburn Trance. Got it for AoE. Um, Ruin 3 had its potency reduced, and that's mostly because of. Is the Ruin Master? Yeah. So, uh, Ruin 3 is now going to straight up replace Ruin 1, so they bring the potency down, and it's just a potency increase over Ruin 1 overall, and its MP cost is going to be reduced. Uh, the additional effect of no cast time while in Dreadworm Trance has been added, so it's instant cast in Dreadworm Trance. That's probably one of my favorite things about it. Ruin 4's cast time has been made instant. Okay, that's not what I wanted to see, though. I got to see the other details about Ruin 4. Uh, Ether Pact, uh, increased to two minutes, huh? No longer requires party members within 30 yalms, probably because you could just buff yourself. Um, the effect of increased attack potency, oh, did they change how, yes, they did. It reduces damage, has been changed to 2%. Man, they really like giving some of these really weird numbers for their buffs. I always laughed that Radiant Shield was like 2% for four seconds, and then you had the nice, the nice even contagion for 10%, and then you have this another, another, 2%. Now, that being said, it, it does now also increase healing magic potency of all party members by 5%, so they did add... Oh, no, no, they left the healing magic potency as 5%, reduced the damage dealt and damage taken part to 2%. Alright, well, I guess if you're going to be using it that much, I guess if you're going to be actually getting it onto people, it's going to be working on, you know, all the targets around you, I guess I get it. Um, once every two minutes, though. It's kind of weird, you know, I see all, all, so many other jobs have just, like, flat buffs to everything and then like summoner gets this they get one buff to devotion it's because they have all the other things because they have contagion and radiant shield and all that other junk but it's just kind of weird two percent is going to be just it's just hilarious to me when i see these kind of numbers rune mastery now acquired at 54 instead of 62 um the effect 50 percent chance of rune one and rune three or upgrade to rune four has been changed it changes rune to rune three so it works just like stone one two three and four activation requirements been removed and the icon has been changed where's mention of hello Ruin 4? Hello? There's got to be something else somewhere. Hold on. I'm skipping ahead. New actions. Oh, new traits. Okay, so they put it under new traits. Okay. So it is still a proc. 15% chance that a pet action will trigger uh, further ruin, which changes ruin 2 to 4. Okay, okay. So it is still remaining a proc. That was there was something that we weren't 100% sure about. All right, all right. So they, they just added a new trait, and it's still a proc. It just goes from ruin 2 to ruin 4. All right. Just wanted to make sure. All right, summon, summon two for scholar. Less cast time, less MP. That's a good. That's a good buff for scholar because that makes dissipation a little more useful. Um, Eloquium MP cost reduced, sucker MP cost reduced, barrier effect increased to 150. percent So whatever, it's bringing it in line with uh, with the Astro Nocturnal Shield. Even still, they act the uh, the Nocturnal Astro Shields take longer to cast and have the 15 percent flat buff from Nocturnal Sect in general. So uh, it's I guess yeah, it's closer to feeling balanced. Fake arrest when in sick mode, Selene will now activate fake, fake arrest when inflicted with an enfeeblement that can be removed with the skill. I thought that was already happening in sick. Oh, okay, yeah, no, I thought that was already, okay, just shows you know, how much I play Scholar. Um, all the cooldowns on Mana Shift, Addle, Apocatastasis were reduced, holy moly, Apocatastasis was almost brought down to half the time. That's pretty crazy, 30 seconds, 30 seconds on the other two. Sure cast is also, <laughs> it won't fall off after you cast the spell, so you can actually still cast spells on x death in phase one when you go trying to prevent the knockback all right much more useful sustain is coming back i know summoners are looking at titan like let's go to floor 200 and palace of the dead easier said than done range physical dps and magic dps classes will now be able to see their own targeting indicators when using alert that's the winner you know how there's always the one thing in the patch notes that surprises you and you're like that's the winner that's the winner because it was silly that it didn't work that way before um well ranged magic dps placed their circle so, I've really just... It's just you guys. It's just the Bard and Machinist one, really, but it's whatever. 
Effects for the following actions will now always display regardless of graphic setting. Oh, you know what, though? Never mind. I understand how this works. I understand what they mean by that. Um, Paladin Sword Oath will no longer end when locking out. Okay, that sounds like a bug fix. Uh, help text for certain actions and stuff has been updated. Icons have been changed. Following effects will now display status icons when their associated actions are used. All right. Okay. Uh, target command. Oh, I see now. So that way, yeah, so you can see things like your fellow Astro's card. And Okay, that's that's good because a lot of people have been complaining, especially when you have two Astro's and like the Duty Fighter or something. Uh, text, com uh, text command to adjust the size of Demi Bahamut has been added. New dungeon, Drowned City of Scala, 300 item level to enter. No surprise there. Just a quick little quest that you got to do. HP of enemies. I'm going to assume that this, this means it's part of the main scenario because it's all, yeah, it's all question mark, question mark, question mark. HP of enemies at level 15 to 49 to 51 59 dungeons has been adjusted. Curious to see how that ends up working out. Uh, Minstrel's Ballad Shinryu's Domain has been added. 320 is the average item level to... Uh, wow, really? 320, huh? Yeah, I guess that's that's in line. That's so similar to what they did with Thornton. Uh, most of the primals are 20 item levels below their weapon, I believe. And I believe Thornton was only 15. So because we're expecting Shinryu weapons to be 335... Yeah, okay. That, uh, that puts it in line. Um... It's kind of hard to argue that it's, you know, whatever. We're not going to get into too many details here. Just go to the Wandering Minstrel in Kugane, and you'll be able to unlock it. It'll take, like, two seconds. Items that drop directly from boss enemies will now drop from treasure boxes in the following instances. Ah, it's all stuff. High Four Wings, Fiend Sap, Expanse, Baleen. Uh, the Royal City of Rabinaster has been added as the 24-man raid. 305 is the minimum item level to enter, where just the gear is going to be item level 330. There's really no chance of variance in that. City Fallen would be the second quest you have to do dramatis personae and then it'll give you the uh, a city fallen quest other than that it's the same as all the t other 24 mans three alliances one tank two healer five dps in each of the parties rewards have a weekly lockout on top of that uh will receive its own treasure chest for each alliance uh let's see is there anything completion reward upon completing it once per week uh the reward could be exchanged for uh, items used to enhance equipment purchased with Algon Tome Sense of Creation. That would be the Glazes and the Twines, so upgrade away, ladies and gentlemen. Players will also receive one crack cluster per week, as if they already weren't easy enough to get. Weekly restrictions on Maki Matter from Dunn's case have been... I honestly forgot it still had those. Entry requirements for Labyrinth of the Ancients have been changed to one tank, two healer, five DPS. And that's because we have the Alliance Raid Roulette now, and everything is going to have the same, uh, the same Alliance size. Time until the boss area and Alliance Raid Dungeons is sealed has been increased to 30 seconds. I guess they got... <laughs> I guess because people die on the trash and then they're trying to run back and someone just pulls the boss. Yeah, it's most likely for situations like that. I get that. Uh, players will now, will now receive Echo in the Emanation, the Royal Menagerie, and Pool Tribute. Listen, if any of these three instances needed it, we all know which one actually needed it. Anyway, uh, you get Echo now in those. And apparently, you also get it in Extreme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're going to add it to also Susano and uh, Lakshmi Extreme as well. But it's at a at a lower rate for this one. This is only 5%. This one's 10%. Okay. The weekly restrictions on Normal Mode Omega have been removed. We expected that. The duty list for the Expert has been reorganized to include the Drowned City of Scala. A nice four-dungeon roulette. Like a game of Simon Says. It's just... Oh, looks beautiful. Um, duty to the Alliance. The Alliance Raid. This is the roulette. It's all the old 24-man raids. Revanaster will not be in it. They want people doing the old 24 mans with this roulette, not the most recent one, which is what would happen if they added uh, the Royal City of Revanaster to it. Uh, Duty Roulette Mentor, on the other hand, that has the Royal City of Revanaster. Um, Shinryu's Domain has been added to the Raid Finder, and then you can all the old Extreme Primals are now in the Duty Finder as opposed to the Raid Finder. All right, uh, Shinryu's Domain has been added to Stone Sky C, Replenation of Sustain. Cannot be used in conjunction with the Sustaining Potion item in Palace of the Dead. You know, Square Enix, it's like, no one's gotten to floor 200 yet. Would it have really been that bad to let them double up on both of them? I feel, no, yeah, no, I, uh, whatever. Anyway. Players will now receive a brilliant conviction effect when entering quests, uh, quest battles introduced prior to patch 4.1. Brilliant conviction, I think that's the one that automatically heals you over time, if I'm not mistaken. No, I feel like that might be something else. New PvP actions. Okay. Thrill of War increases maximum HP of self and nearby party. Oh, are we just going to get all the new skills back over the course of the expansion? Uh, or the old skills back? Increases the maximum HP of self and nearby party members by 10%. Restores HP 
by 10%. Okay, yeah, that's expected. Dragon Sight. Grants, they're giving them Dragon Sight? Okay. 10% for you, 10% for the ally. All right. Tribador. And then reduces damage taken, increases damage dealt by 5%. Okay, so both of those are pretty good. Can only be executed while singing Paeon or Minuet. Both are pretty good. Flamethrower. <laughs> exactly the ability I want in Pete. Holy moly. All right. Uh, heat gradually increases by 10. Uh, oh, I guess this kind of makes sense for trying to get them back to their gauge. Additional attack. Fire damage over time stacking up to 10 times. I mean, I know 250 is like PvP 250, and then this is... So if you stun lock somebody and just burn them to death, they're just gonna burn for damage. Dude, that's way better than the PvE effect. Why do they keep making the PvP versions of abilities more interesting than the PvE version? Oh man. All right. Uh, let's see. Red Mage Vercure. Um, they're giving them that in P. All right. Whatever. I'm not even gonna question. They said they were considering nerfing it in PvE, but let's give it to it in PvP as well. Makes sense. So they can get dual cast outside of combat. All right. Astrologian's getting Sleeve Draw and Minor Arcana, which means they're getting Lord and Lady of the Crowns. All right. Uh, Holy Spirit it has been buffed, requiescat, or request cat as I like to call it. Duration is only six seconds. Alright. What? But it makes all What alright, you know what? I'm just I don't even I don't even know what the I, I don't know what the scale what the scope is for PvP on these changes. I'm just I'm gonna leave it alone. Uh, additional effect reduces so skewer now gets Attack magic and healing potency reduction. Oh no, they changed it to just oh no, it's ten percent instead of twenty percent. They could have just said that. Reduces the target's attack potency and healing magic potency. They could have just said it was 10% there. Dragon's Gauge, now only three units now. Blood of the Dragon, recast time's only five seconds. Shira Skogul, potency reduced, but its recast time is down. And because its Dragon Gauge cost has been reduced from four to three. Okay. Nastron, same deal. Just reduced by 500. Reduced the, the recast time and the Dragon Gauge cost reduced. Life of the Dragon, and now properly states. Tenka, Goken, PvP, now requires a target. Okay, I feel like that's fair. Uh, Shikuchi, time. Okay, so they're just adding the PvE thing for the, the jump there. The additional effect bind has been added to repelling shot. That's pretty nice for bards. Summoner, energy drain, recast time has been increased to three seconds. All right, red mage um, generates a lot more mana now from their basic spells. And whoa, over flare and holy. Now have additional effects of restoring MP or TP. I don't know if Red Mages had issues with uh, their resources in PvP, but that's just interesting to me. All right. Flunge. TP cost reduced. All right. This is, yeah, I guess I don't really know much about how uh, Red Mage uses TP in PvP. I've never done it as, as Red Mage, so uh, I wonder if it's because of Flunge. Um, um, Monomachy. There you go. Duration change to 10 seconds. So they didn't get rid of any abilities. Just, or did they? And it's just not listed here. Oh, okay, it was the very next thing, because I was going to say, what the hell, they just took, uh, okay, that's why. They're getting rid of Inner Release, Battle Litany, Battlefield March, Report, Manification, Drawn Deer. Okay, I was going to say, if you're just adding actions and just not getting rid of the old ones, that's going to be bad, man. They just waited till here. They could just put that the abilities are gone here instead of taking this extra space. The amount of PvP experience received from PvP duties has been increased. Man, if the botting in Shatter wasn't bad enough before. Just, how about just this, but not for Shatter? That would be... I would appreciate that. It's for all of them, but can we just exclude Shatter? Yeah, what the heck? Astro doesn't have cards anymore? Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Astro doesn't have cards in PvP anymore? Alright, then I don't alright, whatever. I don't I don't I don't get it. I mean, whatever. I got nothing. I got I got nothing. I've I've got nothing. Oh, only PvP, I'm sorry, that's PvP experience, not regular experience. Can it still not go to Shatter? I'm just salty about Shatter. They should really f just get rid of the XP and Shatter. <laughs> I think my true motive just came out there. The Feast 4 and 4 training match has been added. Uh, okay, so you can do that via the Duty Finder. You can do that with the Crossover Party Finder as well. Matching algorithms have been adjusted for 4 on 4 ranked match to ensure players are matched with other others of the same or the adjacent tier. Okay, so that's just so you actually queue with people around your skill level. Match progress window will no longer become active when entering a PvP area or returning to a home point after being incapacitated. Alright, yeah, I can see why that's a problem. Sound effect that played when using quick chat option retreat has been changed, probably to be more obnoxious so people actually pay attention. The job requirement to spectate custom matches has been changed to any class or job at level 30 or above. Sweet! New items have been added. These are the dungeon gears. Uh, there's also, of course, more than this. They said they didn't want to show us the Royal City of Rabinaster gear because it would be a spoiler. So, alright, we'll wait. I mean, that obviously means it's going to be like tactics characters and stuff. I think someone saw the tank was wearing like Ramses gear in the trailer. So, yeah, we'll take that as it is. New recipes have been added. Most definitely going to be coming from Uznair, some of those materials. 
Uh, new dyes, metallic orange, metallic yellow. Um, following items have been changed to unique untradeable to just untradeable heroes belts and ardent belts. Okay. I guess that was a problem. Uh, the following items no longer share a cooldown timer with medicine items such as potions. Okay, that's good because it was a very minor thing, but yeah, I kind of appreciate this. Uh, the sale price of certain items has been adjusted. The order of certain items as they appear in the market board news the sort function has been changed. Retrieve Materia subcommand. You can right-click Retrieve Materia, and it'll give you a chance of success. It was 40% chance of success for Grade 6 Materia, so I hope you weren't making most of your money on the Materia market. Obvious reasons. Uh, following items will now appear in the currency window. Yes. No, show me the ventures. Show me the ventures. Show me the ventures. Well, those are the tribal ones, but we know ventures are going to be there, too. Oh, here they are. They're just not showing them in the picture. Because they're on a different tab. Anyway. Um, Exali Oak Knots. Exali Oak Knot Promissory Note? Oh, okay. Any of the above items. And then you can use the Promissory Note to be traded to the NPC. Okay, that's kind of annoying. But I guess I didn't really have a good solution for them to take it from your inventory and put it in the currency there anyway. So you will have to go trade this stuff to an NPC in order to get it in your currency tab. But at least it doesn't have to take up inventory space anymore. Um, and this is just one example. All of these will become Promissory Notes if you, uh, if you have them. Let me take a sip of my coffee real quick. Hmm. Okay, there's Promissory Notes, Venture Promissory Notes, Calamity Salvager. I'm just going to go to the Calamity Salvager for all this stuff. But from now on, you won't need to do that. After, from 4.1 and on, any new Beast Tribes or things, it's just going to be added straight to the, the Currency tab. Mm. Venture Tokens can no longer be gained from all these uh, Desynthesis. You could get those from Desynthesis? Maybe it was like Fish or something. Coffers containing items such as Valor Armor Coffer can now be used uh, outside large settlements. Okay. Uh, just not in instance areas at all. Success rate for desynthesis has been adjusted. We, it looked like it was increased to me from what we saw in the preview. Uh, optimal skill rating for desynthesis will now be displayed. That's a nice. That's a, a nice benefit. That's crazy. 255 is the optimal. At 250, you have a 67.5% chance. That used to be a flat 50% chance if you were the same level as the optimal. They're five levels under it, and it's like 67.5. That's gonna make desynthesis leveling a lot easier. The display only recent recipes option has been added to filter conditions. Uh, following crafter gather actions can no longer be repeated while on already under their effects. I wonder if that's just so people don't double tap them. All right, uh, Fisher Skull Fathom is no longer required for Truth the Oceans. New minor and botany gathering points have been added. New items have been added to gathering points. The location of gathering points and the peaks have been adjusted. <clears throat> the time at which the following gathering points appear has been switched. The ephemeral nodes in uh, the or just uh, switched for the lush between the lush vegetation. And the rocky outcrop ephemeral nodes in Yanja. New fish have been added to 61 to 70 locations. New spearfishing locations. Locations of swimming shadows in the Ruby Sea in Yanja have been adjusted. The success rate of reeling in certain fish in Thornblood area has been increased. Vitality attribute has been added to gather. <laughs> that's that's funny to me. That's it's good, but that that's funny to me. <laughs> they were getting beat on pretty hard if they even even remotely aggroed something for a second. I like that. That's funny. Number of yellow uh, crafter scripts re re received in exchange for collectibles at the Spunders Exchange has been increased. Players can now speak to Monago to do new custom deliveries. Is it still only six per week? It's still only six per week. I don't know why I expect that any different. I'm going to use this to level my crafters, most likely. I was originally just going to do this as gathering to get it done. I'll probably do this as my crafters. I don't see really any reason not to. Just go to Rogers Reach, talk to uh, Galliana, and you can unlock None Forgotten, None Forsaken, and start learning the story of... Monago and what she's been up to in Rogers Reach. Experience points have been added. Oh, you can also use them for Zloe for 55 to. Oh, you could use Zloe for it. All right, never mind. You could use Zloe if you want to as well. So now I really don't know what I want to do. Eh, I'll just do it with Monago. Uh, weekly resets have been changed to Tuesday. Yeah, we knew that. Display of error and warning prompts for purchasing items have been adjusted. The following additions and adjustments have been made to retainer ventures. New items have been added to quick exploration ventures. New categories have been added. Field, Highland, Woodland, and Waterside Exploration, number 22. Lumithite Orb. Orb? <laughs> Lumithite. Lumithrite. Jesus. Ore has been added to 56 to 60 mining veins. New mounts have been added. We have the Shinryu Doggo. We saw the Corpaker earlier, which you can get from MGP. And we have a couch. Just a couch. I wonder if this comes from Scala. Or if it comes from someplace else. Or if it comes from uh, the Hidden Canals or something. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to put my money on Scala for uh, for this mount. Players can now use a special action when riding the Witch's Broom mount. Yeah, they told us about that a while ago. Slutner can fly. I'd almost forgotten they said they were doing that. New minions have been added. Hien the Koala. Look at that Koala. Tell me you don't want that koala. Either the koala or the Shiba Inu, which isn't actually shown here, surprisingly. 
I just saw what the next thing is. Or the Shiba Inu, I, one of those has to be from the Hidden Canals. So if you, <laughs> if you don't like the way that Ixion looks, just get your Chocobo as, as Ixion. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's, by the way, the Shinryu one is the greatest Chocobo barding of all time. That is amazing for a Chocobo. That is the demon Chocobo. This one kind of looks silly, but this one looks insane. Look at that. Dude, I will, I've had my Ravana barding on for ages now. I think I'm going to use the Shinryu one when I get my hands on it, because that's pretty sweet. New achievements and titles have been added. A certain duties and trials will now count towards the completion of duties. They basically added the new duties to the tank you and tankless job achievements. Um, Glamours can now be unlocked at level 15. Okay. I never liked that it was level 50. The Glamour system still needs a complete overhaul, which I think they said they were planning for 4.2. That being said, level 15. All this is just everything becoming available at level 15. That's pretty sweet. That means that now free... Assuming free trial people can do this, right? Yeah. That means that free trial players can now Glamour. So free trial, hey, it's a little bit better now than it used to be. Um, let's see. Absolutely Glamorous. It doesn't say anything that you can't do it, right? I don't think it does. New quests, new Glamours... Master Leather Worker, Recipe Books, Level 15. Okay, just making sure all of that's there. Um, when receiving a friend request from a player in another world, their information will now appear on the contact window list. Players can now add other players from different worlds within the same data center to their friends list. Okay, yeah, we knew this was all coming. Players can send tells to players from different worlds. And at 4.2, we know we're getting like the cross world link shells and stuff like that. <clears throat> uh, new messages have been added to the friends list to indicate whether a friend is online. Oh, that's pretty nice. I like that. Um, I mean, it was, we had it there. We had this, this little symbol right here. Oh, it's specifically, if uh, another world cannot be verified, a specific icon will be displayed. If it cannot be verified at that time. All right. Uh, players can now use the party finder to recruit for cross world alliance raids and custom matches. We knew that honestly, the cross world alliance raid one looks really nice. You click on the person who's doing it. It shows you three parties and you just pick which party you want to join. It does the same thing for custom matches, but one of them is team one, team two and spectators. So it looks pretty sweet. Alliance raids, recruiting. Yeah. In fact, it's showing you right here. Like I'm glad that they just made it. One person starts it and then 23 people join it. Like this could they i wouldn't have put it put past square enix to have screwed this up somehow and made it not as self-explanatory as it should have been so i'm glad that they just they, they got it right it looks great it looks beautiful and i'm looking forward to uh, trying to use it at the very least participating yeah and then when you click you click join party and it'll show you that thank goodness they just they didn't screw it up and then this one is the same as before you have the eight you could do the the custom match feasting grounds it does up to eight so you could do eight v8s for custom matches uh you could also do the four v4s though so don't worry participating make sure when searching for a custom match use the roll the number of claws fangs and spectators will be displayed uh, following additions adjustments have been made to the party finder display settings have been added lock duties can be hidden and the interval between notifications can be changed uh new button enabling a simplified display. Wow, they're really doing a lot of the simplified stuff. That actually, the simplified display does kind of look neater and nicer and whatnot. Um, let's see. Unlock duties can be sorted to the top of the list. High-end duties can be added. Condition duty incomplete has been added to the recruitment criteria. Duty incomplete. The same condition can be uh, selected in search criteria when using advanced search. Okay. All right. That's nice. We've had a lot of issues with duty complete, duty incomplete, and stuff like that. Just just issues with the party finder and people joining things that uh that they shouldn't be joining and whatnot so okay party finder display settings allow you to change the interval between advanced search log messages between one and ten minutes tell messages can be sent directly to the recruiter thank god thank you there's so many times a samurai has had like loot locked on like oh three savage i'm like dude i already have the pants i don't need any more twines i just want to get the clear for the week can you just can you let me in and i'm just like i just want to send them a tell all i want to do is send them a tell and i can't and now i can so thank goodness for that okay adjustments have been made to long messages displayed when forming a cross world party all right uh color filters oh this is all gpo stuff huh gpo's idling camera you can add screen effects, color filter, or new color filters and new screen effects, I should say. Uh, they should have shown a few of them. Eh, whatever. I guess that'll be a surprise. Selecting a quest marker on the region map will switch the corresponding area map. Using gamepad or controller scroll around the map holding uh, R2 or right trigger will reduce the scroll speed. Companions and minions can now be summoned at the same time. Put that right towards the end. Uh, time remaining now displays on the list. Oh, this is going to be all the HUD rework stuff that we've been going over. Minion disappears as a result of a character being KO'd. The minion will reappear when the character is revived. 
Display resolution uh, for the character. Oh, yeah, this is them going up to 200%. Resize. Oh, no, this is them going up to 200%. This is just the display resolution for the character model itself shown on try on, die, and everything. So that way, that one's going to be increased. Okay, that's just for the character itself. Following has been uh, have been added to the current team menu. We knew this. That's weird that they would show it twice. Uh, the following additions have adjustments have been made to the actions and traits menu. The position of the general tab has been added. Class and jobs have been added under actions, and as such, job has been removed. Looks much nicer now. Actions have been found under the actions tab. Can be displayed. Yeah. The, to better distinguish between actions that can and cannot be assigned, the... Uh, Oh, so they, they changed the icon if you if you can't actually place it on the barn, it's just like replacing an existing ability using Warrior's Decimate as an example, uh, then it's going to have a little bit of a, a different look to it. Uh, duty actions have been moved to the General tab, and Companion tab has been changed to the Orders tab, which contains both Companion actions and Orders given to Squadron members. Target type, target closest, I don't, you know, that's all that. Just so many, just too many letters there. Target type, target closest enemies, options have been added. I feel like every time we have this option the target closest enemies option like we've tried to do it and it just it still does whatever it wants please work please please work please please work <laughs> i really really need the target closest enemies option to work i really need it to work <laughs> please it's been four years uh stormblood beast tribe's been added to the reputation tab uh when using a mouse right clicking a hot bars number cycles through the hot bar layout okay uh, target party list can now display up to 10 status effects. Okay, I like it. And you can reorganize them, of course. Or you can uh, choose what you prioritize, I hope, uh, on that part. I know you can do it elsewhere with the new UI changes, but still. Following additions, adjustments have been made. Adjustments have been made. You have the actual... Okay. <clears throat> adjustments have been made to the default positions of certain HUD elements. The party list has been adjusted. So that up to eight players, one pet, and one companion can be displayed simultaneously. The duty option has been added to the HUD layout filters. Uh, this includes PvP UI elements, not selectable when using all. 200% is the maximum now. Target bar can be divided into HP, progress bar, and status. The status one is, for me, probably the bigger one. <laughs> uh, to enable this function, select target bar from the HUD layout, and then select display target information independently. <laughs> it took us four years, ladies and gentlemen, but we could finally separate everything. The status info UI element has been divided into enhancement, enfeeblements, and other... It looks so nice. It just looks so nice to see them so not forced to be in the same spot next to each other. Oh, man. Job gauge. Okay, we have the simple job gauges. So the number of required units from four to three. Okay, they're just showing you the visuals. They added a straight shot gauge. I would still like... Is any is straighter shot anywhere in here? No, straight shot's increased critical hit rate effect has been added. I'm still... I still kind of wish that refulgent arrow procs, or in this case, straighter shot procs, would in some way display. I know it gets... I know it's getting a little too busy... And I appreciate the straight shot buff being there, but straighter shot would be the, the final straw, kind of. Just the one last thing that it could use, and then it would be perfect. But that's nice. I do like that. And, uh, you know, I didn't even realize Hotshot wasn't already currently there when we were looking at the simple ones the other day. But I should have figured it out when I saw that straight shot was added. And then there's also simple modes. I was wondering what the Samurai one was going to look like. That's pretty nice. That's very simple right there. Um, red mana, I say, is it bad that I still kind of wish this was vertical, as opposed to being, uh, horizontal? And then you have the gauge. Yeah, it's just simplified gauges, and then this one, uh, I don't know, I still, I'm still a bigger fan of the original one for Astros, personally. Um, just, just out of personal preference. It didn't really change much at all, it's just... I just, I don't know, I like the Astro one better. Uh, I'm going to keep the old one for Astro. Warning message has been added when attempting to join a duty via the duty finder. If gear condition... Oh, there is... That's, you know what, remember when I said that about the other thing before? Nope, this is, this, this is the one. I mean, to be fair, at this, as far as I'm concerned, if it's below 50%, you should be getting this message, because I don't, tr I don't trust nobody when it comes to the duty finder, but thank God they're doing something. <laughs> All right. Just anything at all is appreciated. Just bump that up to 50% and we'll be all right, okay? All your adjustments to the main scenario guide. Changes have been made to the timing of the schedule. Uh, with the side quest, my feisty little chocobo and job unlock quest are displayed. Number of ex uh, numbers shown on experience points bar now includes commas. Holt, we have the technology, guys. We have commas. It's nice. It is nice, but... All right, commas. Uh, it's like... <laughs> this had to be in the 
All right, never mind. Recycling through inventory tabs, the gamepad or controller. Okay, most recently used chat mode when saved when logging out will be retained upon logging back in. Uh, the icons for wave and goodbye have been redesigned. You know, that's really good because I was using those the other day and I was like, what? which one is which? I like it. I like it better now. Wave, although that's going to confuse people at first. It's definitely going to confuse people first because the new wave one is the old goodbye one. But I feel like it makes sense because that's definitely more goodbye-ish. Uh, following additions have been made to character configuration interface. I usually skip through a lot of this stuff. Tar target closest enemies, ignore depth or cone. Please, please target closest enemy. Just please work. That's all I need you to do. <laughs> Party list, uh, status effects displayed. Oh, you can choose if you want to display less than 10. Good. I was I, I was wondering that when we talked about it before. Excellent. Uh, cross tab. Enable duty action input. Uh, following has been removed from character configuration interface. Uh, display enhancements and fuel balance. Uh, they can now be... F oh, that's because they can be found under the HUD layout themselves. Okay. When viewing the credits, two on the numeric pad, adjust the speed, and zero pauses. Took us four years for that, ladies and gentlemen. Following text commands have been added. Slash title. Oh, you can just change your title or display no title. Or a random title will be set. Okay, we can do title roulette here. I am never going to type out the full title of a title. All right? I'm never going to do that. Bon slash vomit size. <laughs> I can't wait to see. They should have included a picture of Small Demi Bahamut. I want to see Small Demi Bahamut. Uh, slash role playing. Oh, that's so you can put up the RP, the RP thing above your head. Emote log shows the log of emotes. Job HUD mode. That's how you change the uh, the user interfaces between the job gauges between normal and simple. And then if there's multiple job HUD modes, you use one or two. Uh, master volume. Oh, that's actually pretty nice to have a text command for that. BGM sound effects, voice, and system sounds, ambient sounds, sound effect self okay just for yourself okay and sound effects party oh you can you can break it down so sound effects from like party members or others oh i like this oh this is good title camera at third person camera angle settings okay ground sit <laughs> as opposed to okay it's just a new type of sit that's all it is it's instead of you have a sit you have a ground sit so there you go you have squats you have the push-ups you have the sit-ups you have breath control Okay, you have Converse, which is the talking one. You have Concentrate, Disturbed, uh, Simper, Beam, Attend. Wow, there's a lot of new emotes. A Tease, Box, <laughs> Put Up Your Dukes, uh, Ritual, Prayer. That's a lot of new emotes. That was uh, surprising. Although some of them we know come from the Squadron stuff. And I think we're at the bottom here. New phrases have been added to the auto-translation. Adjustments have been made to certain items in auto-translation. New music has been added. Adjustments have been made to veteran rewards. And the following items are now available for purchase on the Mog Station. Tale of Adventures 1 Retain... <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can buy a level boost for your retainer now? <laughs> wait a minute. Just, just wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right. Okay, you know what? I can accept it, because I hate leveling my retainer. Um, metallic orange die, metallic yellow die, gold leaf interior wall, gold leaf flooring, vampire's vest, con uh, continental eye, pipe and hot pumpkins through all saints, wake orchestral roll, up at dawn orchestral roll, and far eastern noble attire. I cannot believe... Oh, by the way, there was no mention of lifting the cap of, uh, of the tales of the adventure in the first place so that's another thing that wasn't present here so that's it for the 4.1 patch notes pretty much what we expected a few surprises here and there as you can see right here at the very end uh but be sure to let me know what you think what were your favorite parts what were the parts you didn't like in the comment section of the video below i'm gonna get back to my twitch stream because now we have some stuff to laugh at some stuff to talk about and uh, a stream to do i'm gonna get this uploaded as quickly as possible though thank you for watching this incredibly long uh patch note reading video all that stuff you know thank you and of course i'll see you next time until then Take care. I cannot believe there is a retainer jump potion. I'm like, I'm like...